you need to think of all the customers that you will pull in when they see something like that. Agriculture has been changing and agriculture is changing. It's not just anymore about producing a better product, but if we want to get in touch with you as the consumer, we need to go through some extra effort for that. My name is Simeon, I work as a farmer and a farm planner and farm consultant and I try to help people develop a new kind of farm, a new kind of farming that involves keeping you and the consumer part of the whole process. So before we dive into this video and today's topics of microponds and the new kind of farming, uh, we just wanted to address the comments section a little bit on our previous videos. We announced that we are going to be moving to the US and Apparently, so many of you guys already know or think to know that we're moving to Oregon, which is just funny because we've never said that. We've never said that, so. <laughs> but uh, it's true, you are from Oregon. I'm from there. But we've never said that we're going to move there. Hey, we will share with you guys where we will move and um, what we plan on doing there, but... Um, <laughs> We're not quite there yet, we're not quite ready to share. But in this video, now back to the topic from today. There's a reason why farms look a certain way in picture books and children's books. And I try to design farms that have that same experience, that when you come and when you look at it, you're just, wow, enchanted by the paradise and oasis of it. An important part for me and for my customers is water. And we are working a lot with micro ponds and it is a, system where you don't focus so much on big pond building though that has its place but on lots of small ponds that i call micro ponds where some of them have water at times in the year then they run dry very important for certain in insects others have water constantly and they just add to the diversity and to the overall feel and and climate of the farm here to the left you see one of those little micro ponds. This is a terrace that we established and very soon we're going to establish a market garden on this place here and there was actually a, a little spring that came out of the mountain and we just dug this pond and very soon it's going to be surrounded by market garden and there are going to be insects and there are going to be plants and it's just going to be an absolutely wonderful place to grow vegetables and to work at. So we have established four terraces here on the slope and we're going to continue these small micro ponds on the terraces down towards the lowest terrace. And this way we're going to capture all that water and the overflow is always going to fill up the next pond and we're creating a small ecosystem. Here we are now on the third terrace and as you can see there's some water exiting the mountain here as well and we are going to build a micro pond a little bit to the left or to the right of where this water is exiting and going to lead the water into this pond. And this way we have full control of the water flow and we're going to create another little habitat here. This will look absolutely gorgeous. When people will come in and they will see vegetables, they will not just see long rows of 75 centimeter wide garden beds, the typical market garden width. They will actually come and they will see they will see vegetables and maybe some garden beds will swing around these ponds and they will see water glittering in the sun, moving in the wind, water plants among with the vegetables and it'll just be a completely different picture and it's just this kind of thing that adds this little extra that when you have a guided tour on your farm or even just for you and your family in the evening when you do your tour or when you are weeding or whatever it is that will just bring you this extra joy and this extra beauty and you'll probably want this chair next to it to, to sit there and relax. Here we are on another terrace on this farm that is a lot bigger and on the previous terraces I showed you these little micro ponds that we included in the terrace for this terrace I plan something different and we're planning a market garden in the middle and a water garden a little bit of an exaggerated ditch so to speak around that garden now it's up to the owner if he actually wants to 
establish that but the point was to first of all create a border around the garden so that no slugs can come into the garden and to also create something absolutely stunning and beautiful to have the market garden in the middle the moisture from the water evaporating the fish the plants around some of the water plants you can have you can have mint in the water garden for example but then also to have the vegetables have deep roots and actually no need for being watered because they can draw the water from the level of this pond. Again, I'm not sure if the owner will actually do this or not because you always are debating whether or not you want to have more space to grow the vegetables or create something like that since right here there's no natural um, spring, no water coming out of the mountain. You would have to lead water here to create this but the, you would have to weigh the benefits and you would have to weigh the cost of it and just see what it is you want to do. Again, if you can reel in the money by doing guided tours, just having this little bit of extra and have a high-end customer for your vegetables, it might absolutely be worth it to create this system. If you want to produce more vegetables, you're better off just putting long market garden beds on this terrace. But I believe that we are moving more and more towards this extraordinary kind of farming where people want to come and just look at it and just fall in love with the place and connect to the farmer and the farm in a completely new way. Where families love to come, where children want to be and where it just looks like straight out of the book. So here I'm standing right in front of one of those established micro ponds on the same farm and we're using it to have two breeding groups of Saxony ducks here that we use to collect eggs from and hatch the, this dual purpose breed and raise the males for meat and the females for laying ducks. Now you can see this is not a very big pond but it is an absolutely gorgeous feature on the farm that creates this beautiful habitat for these ducks and right now we just have this electric poultry netting surrounding this and we have a little mobile quail tractor that we're using as a duck housing right now but the plan is to put a wonderful and beautiful wooden fence around this little place with a tiny home for these ducks and we'll reduce it to just one breeding group one male four females and they will live here and all the farm tours will walk right by here and we'll just naturally fall in love with this. I mean, it looks absolutely gorgeous. You don't have many farms nowadays where you can come and have ducks do something like this and live such a good natural life. Now you might be wondering, Simeon, this is uh, really nice and beautiful, but is it economical? This is of course a question we need to ask ourselves, but that's exactly the reason why I believe that agriculture is changing and why I have a focus on having the people create a little oasis and a little paradise on the farm. You need to think of all the customers that you will pull in when they see something like that. All the families, all the people that will come and fall in love with your farm, of potential farm tours, of potential workshops, of potential products that you can sell. Now beyond that, this little place here, this pond and these two groups of ducks this is worth it in itself and it's very economical. The infrastructure for this beside the pond costs just a couple hundred dollars. You have these eight females and two males and together they lay eggs worth about three thousand dollars if you sell them as hatching eggs for example. Just this little setup you don't have the daily water issue they have the natural habitat and we have seen their feed consumption has gone down as soon as they came out here. They're just overall healthier out here. So I believe agriculture is changing. I believe we need to think more and focus more upon how we connect with the customer and how we create something beautiful and stunning. I don't think it's just about food production anymore. You need to do something that you like, that is you, that fits you and the land, and you need to do something that connects you and your farm to the customer. I believe this is the future. I believe we really have to rethink a lot if it just looks very trashy and run down or if it looks dead like most farms do today then we will have a hard time direct marketing, we'll have a hard time connecting with people and having a good time with friends and even customers on the farm. 
Hey, if you're new to our channel, please make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. We have a variety of videos, both educational and also some vlogs. We recently announced that in the near future, we plan on moving back to the US, my wife's homeland, and hope to farm there. And if you want to follow this journey, if you want to have more content like this one, please make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. We'll see you.